often you will find people from the far right echoing what we say. But they do it out of hatred for Muslim people. I do it out of love. It comes from a very different place and it's for a very different reason and it's seeking a very different outcome. If I'm critical of how we are and what we do, it's because I want us to be better. I am Alia Al Sultani. I am a singer, composer, producer, and I run a couple of record labels. I was born in Basra, which is a city in southern Iraq during the Iraq-Iran war. I think my family was really lucky that we landed in Tottenham. It was one of those fantastic places to arrive in um, as someone who's different or new in a country because everybody has a different sort of immigration experience and some are second generation, Caribbean, and it was like, you know, our differences really didn't matter at all. You know, all, all immigrants who have been away from a place for a long time or lived in exile in any way are in this strange no man's land where they have to sort of make their own little tribes and ways of belonging in the world. You know, if I were to go back to Iraq now, I wouldn't be Iraqi, you know. you know. Even though I speak Arabic fluently, my accent will give me away because, you know, it's tinged with being here for all this time. Um, my parents have been really good about keeping Iraq alive in my life and my brother's life. You know, we have certain food food that we love and we eat together and music and you know they encourage me to record my album of Iraqi folk music. Music kind of happened initially by accident. We were a really poor family so and, and a refugee family so the idea that you could study music or have a career in it it's just not in our conscious you know it's just not in our conscious mind. I was really lucky that I had a school that nurtured that in me and one day i think i was probably seven i was trying to play the school piano and um, linda phillips uh, said do you want to learn and i said yeah i do and this amazing teacher gave up her lunch times to teach me just starting to touch an instrument just opened up my musical world as a war child as someone Who's had, who'd had a lot of rupture and sort of being torn away from different situations. When I was sat at the piano facing the wall, or when I was in a choir singing with all these other voices, I kind of disappeared into that. And it was really the only time I really felt okay. Music for me now is everything I can't express in words. I think it's a privilege to be able to stand on the stage as a woman of color and as a Muslim woman of color and have an audience to listen to whatever it is I have to sing or say. And of course, I'm gonna raise my voice for my sisters who can't. I think that's a responsibility. I think I'm obliged. So yeah, there is always, there is always an element of protest and politics in everything I do. All we are seeking is equality. That's it. The fact of the matter is Muslim people, for example, can have the rug pulled out from under their feet overnight, literally, and we have seen it with things like travel bans and all kinds of changes of law, a rise of hate crime, it can be pulled out from their, their feet with no notice. And we're asking for that not to happen, really. That's it. It's not about taking anything from anybody else. It's not about oppressing anybody else. 
it is just about being the same and being safe and being able to walk through the place where you live without negative consequence. Doesn't sound like a lot to ask to me. I hope that this is the last rise of fascism that we're going to see. And I think it's really important in the groupism that tends to happen in the times that we are in right now, that we present ourselves as whole human beings, differentiated, complex, multifaceted, and feeling and emotional. Because if there's anything we can do, it's to humanize ourselves. That there are young people in Iraq, people in their 30s, let's say, who have seen nothing but war. And there are children in Syria who will see nothing but war. And I look at Yemen and I think about the fact that that is all they will see as well. And I, my heart breaks, absolutely my heart breaks. And I have to stop myself feeling powerless and I, oh. I guess it's always there, but I can't think about it all the time. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's devastating to think that those people have to live that reality and it's all man-made and it's all unnecessary and um, it's all ultimately rooted in greed and power and it's a very 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 sad reality yeah in the Middle East we have a beautiful sense of community we have a rich history. We have contributed incredibly to science and, and development and civilization. We have beautiful women. We have great music. We have superfood. We have all these wonderful things that we can talk about. And we have misogyny. And we have homophobia. And we have corruption. And we have, and we have. And we have to hold both those realities if we're going to develop, if we're going to go anywhere, which is why I love all of the main, especially the female commentators from where I'm from and other places, you know, Muslim women, women of color, who sort of say, this is, this is what I'm unhappy about and this is what needs to change and I'm going to raise my voice about this, whether you like it or not because we do it out of love, you know. Very often, you will find people from the far right echoing what we say, but they do it out of hatred for Muslim people. I do it out of love. It comes from a very different place, and it's for a very different reason, and it's seeking a very different outcome. If I'm critical of how we are and what we do, it's because I want us to be better. And music is one of those things where people will have a belly dancer to their weddings, but if their daughter became one, it would be the end of the world, you know? People listen to music and watch sort of scantily clad female artists do their thing, but if their daughter became one, it would be the end of the world, etc. And it is, it is, it is a funny, it's, it's a funny, it's a funny, funny setup. I hope that over time that can change. I mean, you can look back at say 1950s, 1960s Egypt and see how the arts and entertainment were much more integrated into society and much less sexualized. If you are trying to exert political control over people, the easiest way to do it is to prevent them doing what is most natural to them. 
you know, and punishing them for doing what is most natural to them, whether that is loving each other, whether that is their sexuality, whether that is having sex with someone they love, whether that is listening to music and seeking enjoyment in life. If you make that a bad thing, you control people, you control society. If I were an average white man, I think I would be a lot more successful <laughs> than I am with the same faculties that I have. I think that I have had to be extraordinary to get this far. Being able to finance and support and give my knowledge to multiple young musicians who have released, I've re I am now, I think, executive producer of 25 albums and I run three record labels in different genres. One's in jazz, one is a sort of producer, vocalist, sort of deep pop, and one is grime. It's been a real privilege for me to be able to be involved with really talented young musicians of color in a way where I know they're not getting exploited and I know that they are learning how to fend for themselves in a difficult industry. Um, and it's been a real privilege to see them grow within it. Um, and yeah, I, I, as I'm getting older, I, I see that as a real legacy. When I was a late teen, I mean, from the age of 11, 12, I, I hated that I was distinguishable as not white or Caucasian. I hated that I had dark hair and dark eyes, that I got brown really fast in the sun, that I was, you know, the color that I am, that I had the name that I had. All of those things didn't feel like good things to me. I wanted more than anything to be white and have a name like Annabelle or whatever. I And even to the point when in my late teens, early 20s, I wore colored contact lenses often. I colored my hair quite light. I tried to reinvent myself as a Caucasian woman at one point. And yeah, it's been such an effort and a journey to love the skin I'm in to love my Arabness, to love my frizzy hair, to love my dark eyes, to love my name. It's been a, a long time coming, really. Although it's often a cliche, my inspirations are my, my, my main inspiration in life has been my parents. I have seen them just toil for what they wanted to achieve in life, lose everything several times through no fault of their own, and pick themselves up and keep going. I've seen them face all sorts of adversity with real class and real dignity. I've seen them try and make a happy bubble for me and my brother against the odds. I've seen them protect me and my brother against the odds. I've seen them 
do all sorts of incredible superhuman things with a resilience that is quite incredible. And they, yeah, they did give me the feeling that I could survive everything. And I think they made me courageous and they made me brave.